On February 9th of 2004, 21-year-old UMass student Maura Murray drove from her dorm in Amherst, Massachusetts to the White Mountains of New Hampshire. At approximately 7.27 p.m., Maura spun out her 1996 Saturn on a hairpin turn on Route 112 in North Haverhill. There has never been a credible sighting of Maura since. Maura is 5 foot 7 inches tall. She weighs 120 pounds, and she has brown hair and hazel eyes. If you have any information regarding Maura's disappearance, please submit it to us, the Murray family at Direct at gmail.com, or the New Hampshire State Police Cold Case Unit. This is Missing Maura Murray. Welcome back to the Missing Maura Murray podcast. I'm Tim here today with Lance. Lance, how are you today? I'm doing so well. There isn't anywhere else I'd rather be than right here today, Tim. How are you? I'm doing great, Lance, and thanks a lot. I agree. And uh, Lance, in this episode, we are talking about a missing person from 2017. She went missing on October 10th, 2017. Her name is Denia Kimberly Gillespie. That's right. Uh, Denia Kimberly Gillespie was 38 years old when she went missing, which would make her 41 today. Uh, She was born February 1st of 1979, 5 foot 2 inches, 160 pounds. She's African-American with black hair and brown eyes. And Tim, there is not a lot of information about Denia. And there's not a lot of um, clear, I guess, details about the uh, the events leading up to her disappearance it's it's very tragic and we have our uh, cohort in research and in all things crawl space on with us Jennifer Amell you can kind of hear the frustration in our voices when we're trying to just figure out like why isn't there a lot of information on this poor person this this tragic case yep Jennifer is on with us and uh, there was also some research done by Erica Zapita for this case so thanks a lot to Erica and yeah this is a very tragic case a mysterious case. Denia was wearing a white short sleeve shirt, gray sweatpants, white Air Force One sneakers, and a dark blue bandana when she went missing. And she has a tattoo of an angel on her upper left arm and a tattoo of a phoenix on her right arm. And Denia has a scar on her right wrist, which is uh, raised up, and you can tell that there were stitches there at one point. So a lot of distinguishing characteristics. And again, this research was provided by Jen and Erica through private investigations for the missing. This is what we do as step one of the process to raise the awareness for these uh, tragic missing person cases. That's right. And make sure to check out Bruce Maitland's nonprofit, Private Investigations for the Missing. Check him out at investigationsforthemissing.org. Of course, Lance and I are on the board and it is not fully up and running yet, but we are doing a lot with the resources we do have. And make sure to follow the social pages too. There are links in the show notes. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Okay, and make sure to call the Cobb County Police Department if you have any information on Denia's disappearance. That phone number is 770-499-4148. And there is also a petition on change.org, which is titled Justice for Denia Kimberly Durham. And her name is spelled D-E-N-N-A-I-A. So Denia Kimberly Durham, and that is on change.org. That's right, yeah, and Denia does go by Durham as well as Gillespie, so she could be using either name. Okay, everybody, thanks a lot for listening, and uh, please keep Denia and all these missing person cases in your mind during this season. It must be really awful for these loved ones. And if you're listening to this today, you are listening to it on Thanksgiving, and I know a lot of people aren't traveling for Thanksgiving. If you are, travel safely. And when you're enjoying your day, just make sure that you let your uh, loved ones know, let your friends and family know how much you appreciate them because, you know, like these cases we talk about, there's a number of people who don't have uh, any solutions. There's a number of families out there that don't have access or know where their loved ones are. So just take a minute to appreciate each other. Thank you. 
Today for this episode, we are being joined by our good friend, Jen Amel. Jen, how are you? I'm doing very well. Good to see you. Thank you so much for hopping on to talk about this uh, particular case. A lot of research has been done on it through private investigations for the missing. And I think it might be fair to say that you're sort of the point person for research that goes into this organization. Yeah, uh, fortunately, the organization has, has grown in the last few months, and we've had a lot of volunteers come forward with a certain expertise in, in research. But um, this case today, uh, the research was conducted by an excellent researcher. Um, her name is Erica Zapita. So thank you, Erica. Yeah, big shout out to Erica. Thank you very much for the research. We know she spoke to Denia's daughter and has really uh, carried the torch for her mom's case. So her mother, Denia Kimberly Gillespie, went missing on October 10th, 2017. She would be 41 now, and she was 38 when she went missing. And she went missing from Marietta, Georgia. She is 5 foot 2 inches, 160 pounds. She's African-American with black hair and brown eyes. She has two tattoos, one of an angel on her upper left arm and a tattoo of a phoenix on her right arm. And she was last seen wearing a white short-sleeved shirt, gray sweatpants, white Air Force One sneakers, and a dark blue bandana. And Denia has a scar on her right wrist, and you can tell there were stitches there at one point. So as we mentioned before, uh, Denia was last heard from on October 10th, 2017, but she was last seen, I think, a few days earlier. Phoenix, her daughter, spoke to her mother on the phone around October 10th, and uh, she's provided some screenshots of her text conversation with her mother. And it, it talks about, it sort, it sort of hints that her mother was going through some difficulty uh, concerning some mental health issues and that she had sought therapy for it. Sometime in September of that year, 2017, her daughter thinks it was around the 13th of September, Denia left her apartment after getting into an argument with her roommate and has never been seen again. And Denia's roommate is actually a close friend named Angelie Smith, and Denia refers to this person as her sister, and her daughters refer to her as their aunt. And Denia has lived with Angelie in the past as well, along with her daughter Phoenix. And when Denia left her apartment, she got into a car with a man who has never been identified. And the quote that Phoenix gave Erica was, no one knows who this man is. And that car Deanna was last seen getting into on the date of her disappearance has also never been identified. So Erica uh, conducted some research through the Charlie Project, which, as we know, provides a lot of information about missing people. The Charlie Project states that Denia left her home after an argument with her roommate, leaving her daughter in her roommate's care. I'm assuming they are referring to Phoenix in this statement. However, in a subsequent conversation between our researcher and Phoenix, they were not at the apartment when Denia left. I guess they, they, they were elsewhere. I'm not exactly sure where they are, where, where they were, but this is an incorrect statement on the Tra Charlie Project. And the argument was about Denia starting to pay for household expenses like food stamps. Now, this is um, like a little bit of a confusing statement here because, I mean, you don't necessarily pay for food stamps. You apply for food stamps. Uh, but I think what they meant here is that they were exchanging food stamps for living expenses. Like uh, Denia was issued food stamps and then she would then give these to Anjali who paid rent. Now, we've mentioned Phoenix is uh, Denia's daughter, but she also had a second daughter, Donye, and she had been living on her own and didn't live with her mother. And Phoenix was in her father's care the day that her mother went missing. Phoenix did speak with her mother on the phone the day she went missing. And Phoenix believes, again, that was around September 13th, 2017. And her mother told her that she was leaving and going to Carterville, Georgia. And that phone call was only about a minute long, so there's not really a phone record of it. So it was a, a short conversation that Phoenix had with her mother, but uh, Denia's cell phone was one of those pay-as-you-go phones, so it didn't have any phone records that you could associate with the phone. So there's no um, way to really prove or look at how long she spent on the phone or like who she had been talking to at the time. 
And after Denia's disappearance, her phone started going right to voicemail. Do we know how long after her disappearance it started going right to voicemail and how many people called her? No, because we only have the account of Phoenix. Like, there's no phone records that the police pulled for Denia's phone. So we have no idea. We only have, like, Phoenix's account of speaking to her mother and calling her. Okay, so we're assuming that Phoenix is the one who's calling her mom uh, and reporting that it was just going to voicemail. Correct, yeah. Okay. And again, Phoenix believes that the fight was about household finances, mostly groceries and bills and things like that. And Phoenix doesn't talk to her aunt anymore, not her blood aunt, but uh, this woman, Angeli, who was uh, sort of known as her aunt, and they haven't spoken since Denai's disappearance. That's strange. Yeah, and they had lived together in the past, too. So they're, I mean, they're pretty close, you know, so there's clearly that that argument uh, is sticking with them. And as far as we know, uh, the researcher, Erica, has not spoken to Angeli, that's correct? The aunt, the roommate? Correct, yeah. So just to be clear, Phoenix spoke with her mother on the phone, correct? And that was during the week of October 3rd to October 10th of 2017, but she communicated with her via text, right, from like the 7th to the 10th of October of the same year. Is that clear? This timeline is a bit confusing, so let me just uh, lay it out uh, in a couple points here. So the last time that Denia was physically seen by either her roommate or her daughter was September 13th. On that same day, Phoenix had a phone call with her mother in which she heard her voice and her mother said she was going to Carterville, Georgia. Then the next month, between October 3rd and 10th, Phoenix was texting with her mother. So she didn't hear her voice, and she did not see her in person. But there were texts. And texts are are easy to fake, right? Like, anybody could be texting her from her mother's phone. But voice and obviously seeing in person is, is a little bit harder. And Phoenix thinks this because when she spoke to her on that call in September, right around the 13th of September, her mother told her that she was staying at a shelter in or near Carterville, Georgia. And uh, she also heard her enter a gas station while on the phone. So she was pretty sure that this shelter would have been near a gas station. Oh, that's interesting. So she's on the phone with her mother around September And while she's on the phone with her, she hears her enter the gas station. So I guess if there's like a shelter around the Carterville, Georgia area, I wonder if there, you know, if you could look that up. Um, I guess Phoenix has looked up gas stations near shelters in Carterville, Georgia, and even placed a few phone calls. Um, But what's the story on that? She can't get any information out of the shelters because it's all private? Yeah, I mean, there's been some some discussion of like... uh, I think the words Phoenix used was a super secret shelter where they like don't necessarily give out information about the people that are staying there because they might be in domestic abuse situations or just generally not want anyone to know where they are. So I think it's probably policy of these shelters not to give any information about where they're particularly located or who is staying there. But the location of shelters is public knowledge, so it's, it's a bit confusing why you wouldn't be able to get a location out of that. And you just said that they have lived in super secret shelters in the past. The whole family had lived in these shelters in the past? Yes, I believe so. That Phoenix and her mother and her sister had been in shelters in the past. She didn't say that they were in any specific danger, though. I think it's just like a maybe overarching policy in shelters not to share personal information with people who, you know, call out of the blue. Gotcha. And Phoenix says that her mother has always kept in contact with her and her sister. Um, So it it is unusual for her not to have been in touch for a few years now, uh, except for one time when Denia actually went missing for a few days. And I think that first time seemed to have been uh, a mental breakdown of some kind as well. Right. And we know that Denia was seeing a, a counselor or she was going through or had gone through some therapy in the past. That's correct, right? Yeah, I believe so. 
Okay, I think one of those text messages uh, has a screenshot where she says she uh, just spoke to a counselor and she was feeling better. And that was a text message to Phoenix. Do we know if she was on any sort of medication? We don't know that. Denia has never been formally diagnosed with a particular mental illness. I think they were trying to get a diagnosis of sorts so they could begin, you know, treatment with medication. But I don't think uh, Denia ever got to that point. Uh, concerning her treatment or never shared that information with her daughter. Gotcha. Well, the first disappearance certainly does sound like uh, um, uh, some sort of mental breakdown, like you said, Tim. She was found outside of an apartment complex. Seemingly, there was no connection between her and her family and anyone in the apartment building. And Phoenix had said that her mother was happy to see her, but it was obvious that she was having some sort of a breakdown at that time. And she was found there by Phoenix and Phoenix's father, who were the only ones looking for her at that point. And Denia said something weird, too, when uh, when they found her. She was afraid. She, she said she thought someone was trying to kill her. Yeah, it's a little hard to, to suss out here if... I mean, I think Denia was pretty clearly going through some sort of mental health issues. But that doesn't totally discount the fact that she, her life could have been in danger, but she never really said exactly who she was afraid of, just that she was, I guess Phoenix described it as like paranoid delusions that she thought somebody was after her. It does sound a bit paranoid. Uh, Some of the stories that we've heard in the past are typical uh, of that scenario where somebody thinks that they're being chased or followed or their lives in 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 danger and phoenix said that they did take her mother to the hospital for a psych evaluation and uh and her mother was actually never treated um or seen by a doctor at the hospital that day she ended up getting upset uh denia did and leaving the hospital after finding out that uh her mom uh had shown up at the hospital so she got frustrated i think at at her own family yeah, and I'm I'm not sure where that frustration came from other than being maybe embarrassed that she had gone to a hospital and she didn't want um, people in her family to know that. I'm not sure if there's any other reason for her being upset and leaving. And so, she, again, she was never diagnosed. So Phoenix is on, uh, unsure of what her mother's mental health issues are. Um, and uh, But she is pretty adamant that, that she was suffering mental health issues, uh, at least during that one... Um, I guess you could call it a breakdown. You could also call it a disappearance. And and here we are in 2020 and she's disappeared again. Obviously, I think her mental health is a a clue here, something, some place to look, um, not physically, but I don't know what the action point is after that, though. Yeah, that's a it's a great point. And, and these episodes that she's had in the past where she disappeared previously and now she's gone again, it does speak to the mental health, like you said. But what that also... Uh, instills in me is this sense of urgency. Um, it, it, I feel like there hasn't been a, a sense of urgency just publicly about this. Uh, where we're trying to figure out, you know, the the timeline, and it's very confusing. We're trying to figure out undiagnosed mental illnesses that are obvious, and we're reading the the report that Erica drew up for us, and it says here that a missing persons. Uh, report was not filed until February of 2018. Does anyone know why that took so long? Because I'm feeling like a sense of urgency, right? Because somebody clearly having undiagnosed mental illness issues and in a prior episode, uh, why wasn't a, a missing person report filed until months later, until a couple months into the new year? You know, I think a lot of the responsibility fell on Phoenix in this regard and we have to remember that phoenix was a child like she didn't know what to do and i don't think that um denia really had other people that were paying attention and there's a a lot of um taboo that comes along with mental illness like maybe people think that there's no sense of urgency because there wasn't like a clear perpetrator of a crime like she wasn't abducted or whatever and that she was going off of her own volition yeah but we don't know if if she was abducted or not she got into a an unidentified car with an unidentified man we you know that would be uh that is very very important probably the top on this list tops on this list to uh, identify that car or that man um that's a good place to start to try to find where denia is now mental health breakdown or not right 
Right. And and Jen, you you made a good point. Uh, Phoenix was 15 years old at the time. And she had said that when she first reported this to the police, when she first went to the police and said that her mom was missing, the police officer, according to Phoenix, said that she should be ashamed of herself for having police officers spend time and money to look for her mother. And she has the uh, feeling that the police have done nothing because her mother is, quote, another black woman they don't care about, quote. It's a it's a really unfortunate situation because we hear this kind of thing so many times, like people who are part of a marginalized community or who live below the poverty line just don't see the kind of police or media attention that they deserve. Yeah, and the police in this case felt that she had taken off voluntarily, I guess, she had gotten into that car voluntarily. So it's a possibility, right? Um, But there's not really any excuse to not help at all, not look for her or to uh, be too busy, quote unquote, to uh, to speak with Phoenix, uh, the daughter of Denia, missing person Denia. This is ridiculous. I mean, this gets me fired up. Like, okay, she left voluntarily, but she had she had mental issues. She had a mental illness. She thought she was leaving voluntarily. Right. So you don't look for somebody because they left voluntarily no matter why. And also, what are you busy doing then? If you're are you busy literally with everything then? Like what else is going on? Isn't this part of what you should be busy doing? Yeah, I I agree. I mean, clearly, um, Denia has like exhibited behavior in the past that's consistent with some men- mental health issues. But for her to remain missing and out of contact with her family for so long is out of the ordinary and it speaks to a kind of prescient danger that she might be in. It would be nice if the police responded to Phoenix, uh, to Phoenix's calls. That is uh, that is really inexcusable. And there really hasn't been a lot of coverage uh, for Denia's case at all. And uh, she isn't even listed on the CobbCounty.org public safety uh, missing persons link, is she, Jen? No, she's not, which is really uh, concerning because there was obviously a police report filed for a missing person. So I have no idea why they wouldn't include her on this list. It makes it really difficult for her information to get out to the public and for other media agencies to seize upon this information and publicize the story. But there is some public help. There is a petition going around on change.org that you can sign as of right now. It has over 10,000 signatures. So we'd love it if uh, if you could sign that petition on change.org. And also, is there something that can be done to reach out to the to the officers of uh, Marietta, Georgia, and just find out what is going on? I mean, does like a public outcry uh, do anything, do you think? I don't know how effective these petitions are other than like saying people care somewhat, but I think the police need to be bothered by the public. Like just sending them a petition with signatures maybe isn't uh, getting the point across. I think if people call, if people write, if people make noise about this, then the police will be prevailed upon to do something about this case. Um, I also want to put the call out there to anybody who might have information about this case. Um, We don't know who picked Denia up from her apartment. Um, We don't have a description of that car. If anybody has any memory of seeing Denia get into this car, if you picked up Denia, please reach out to the police and uh, give this information because that's pretty important. And if you have any information on this, you can reach out to Cobb County Crimes Against Persons Office at 770-499-3900. And if you want to inquire about this active investigation through the Marietta Police Department, you can call 770-794-5325. That's 5325. Or to provide any information on this case, you can call their tip line at 770-794-6990. And again, this information came to us and was researched by those who work with Private Investigations for the Missing. That's our nonprofit. That's Bruce Maitland's nonprofit, which helps to provide finances and resources for families who are unable to afford private investigators. And Jen heads up the amazing uh, research department. Uh, They take in all these cases and this is one of them. And really, uh, this is a first step in raising awareness for uh, Denia's case. 
Yeah, and it's part of uh, PIs for the Missing uh, mission to help families that have been uh, looked over by the police or don't have the uh, resources to seek help. So this is a, a very good example of one of those cases, and I'm really happy that we were able to feature it on the podcast today. Me too, and you can check out Private Investigations for the Missing at investigationsforthemissing.org.